At this point, we've seen that we can measure the standard electrode potential or standard reduction potential of a half cell by starting with the standard hydrogen electrode, thinking of that as an anode, as a source of electrons, and creating a galvanic cell with our half cell of interest, which I'm just calling X, and thinking of that as the cathode, and measuring the voltage between those two half cells, placing the negative lead on the she side, treating it as the anode and defining that as our zero of voltage and placing our positive lead on the X side and treating the measured voltage as the standard reduction potential. And notice here that we're thinking of the she as the anode side and our half cell of interest as the cathode side. So from a cell notation perspective, we could think of the cell notation basically like this in shorthand form with the she's components on the left with oxidation of H2 happening there and the components of the X half cell on the right hand side of the cell notation. And we can arrange this setup for a huge, huge variety of half cells X to get standard reduction potentials for a wide variety of reduction half reactions. Some of these will be positive in cases when the oxidation of H2 is capable of powering that reduction reaction spontaneously, and some will be negative in cases when the half cell X actually delivers electrons to reduce protons to H2 spontaneously. But notice that in the table, when you look at tables of these standard electrode potentials, the half reaction written there will always be a reduction reaction. And I sometimes emphasize this by using a subscript R or a subscript red on these standard electrode potentials to emphasize this corresponds to the reduction half reaction by convention. And this table just lists some representative values of reduction half reactions. Near the top of the table, we have highly favorable reduction processes. And you'll generally find very electronegative elements, nonmetals, for example, at the top of these tables with the most positive potentials. For example, the reduction of difluorine to produce two fluoride anions is one of the most favorable reduction potentials on the entire table that you'll come across. Meanwhile, at the bottom, you'll find very electropositive metals, metals that in their elemental state are dying to give away electrons like lithium, sodium, and potassium, those alkali metals that we're very familiar with reacting violently with water because they really, really, really want to give electrons away. And their cations conversely do not want to undergo reduction, right? So these Potentials at the bottom of the table are highly, highly negative and correspond to very stable, unreactive cations that do not want to undergo reduction. So to return to the relationship to the sheen for a second, these potentials that are positive correspond to half reactions that occur spontaneously in the reduction direction when this half cell is connected to the she. And so when I connect a half cell, for example, containing silver plus cation and silver metal up with the she, the reduction of silver plus occurs spontaneously to produce silver metal. This is kind of neat. All you need to produce silver metal from silver plus cation is a little bit of hydrogen gas in the she, right? And Likewise, for all of the other positive potentials, all of these reduction reactions occur spontaneously when the she is connected up to each of these half cells under standard conditions. When we connect the she to itself, well, of course, there's no voltage there, right? That's an equilibrium situation with the same half cell on the left and on the right. So no current will flow. There's no potential difference at all. These negative potentials correspond to cases where the reduction reaction as written is non-spontaneous when that half cell is connected to the sheet. On the contrary, the oxidation of the component on the right-hand side to form the component on the left-hand side is spontaneous. And those electrons that are released or given away are given to the sheet spontaneously. So electrons spontaneously flow from X to the sheet in these cases when the reduction potential is negative. Negative with respect to our standard zero potential. Now something you may be thinking about here is what if, what if I replace the she with some other 
half cell, can I use these standard reduction potentials to calculate the cell potential for the resulting galvanic cell? And the answer is absolutely yes, you can. And that's the reason we essentially generate and measure these, these standard reduction potentials. For example, if I had a galvanic cell that involved iron two and iron in one half cell, and copper two and copper in another half cell, I could calculate the potential of the resulting galvanic cell by realizing that the reduction of copper is going to occur spontaneously, positive cell potential there, and the oxidation of iron to iron two is going to occur spontaneously, negative reduction potential, so positive oxidation potential there, and I can simply add up these two potentials, or I can think about this as a potential difference as we have previously, 0.34 minus 0.4, negative 0.45 for a total of 0.79 volts in that resulting galvanic cell. So we can use these standard reduction potentials to determine the standard cell potential for any galvanic cell whose standard reduction potentials we know.